In this video, I will show you the buy drawdown strategy on the German stock index of DAX. So what we have see here, for example, is the all-time high on the German stock index. In April, on April 5th, 2015, the price on the German stock index was 12,380 euros. And then uh, there was a bear market between uh, April 5th, 2015 and April, uh, February 7th, 2016. So for around one year, prices on the DAX were dropping. And during this time, the strategy decided to buy here and here at certain drawdown levels. And after that, after we recovered from the maximum drawdown on February, February 7th, uh, prices then uh, moved back up and broke the all-time high on April 23rd. So as you can see, time is our biggest asset as over the long term, the prices of stock indices tend to go up and by allowing time to exploit this fact we are able to make profits just by buying at cheap prices however uh, the one uh, downside of the strategy is that it requires a lot of time so we see that between the first trade that we've opened on April 12th, uh, it took around two years to close the trade. So on April 23rd, 2017, uh, we were able to close the trade. By looking at other examples, for example here, here we have another uh, bear market between uh, January 14th, 2018 and December 16th, 2018. We were able to buy prices at cheap uh, on January 28th and here on October 21st, 2018. And it's between the first trade and then the closing of trades. It is again taking around two years to go into profit. And here, this is the COVID phase. So this is when COVID hit and we were a actually able to even catch uh, this move, which is a 35% drawdown on March 15th. But we see that eventually, even after a drop of 35%, the market recovered and then uh, we were able to close at the uh, next all-time high again. So this strategy is very good if uh, time is your resource and uh, however it is also very risky as you can see we're buying to drawdowns so it is not advisable to use leverage with this strategy and you should always expect markets uh, to drop even 50, 60 or 80 percent right but uh, it is highly unlikely that uh, the prices on stock indices go to zero as the stock indices are like already diversified by nature. These are basket of stocks. And for that reason, this strategy is very ideal for uh, these asset classes. So what I'm going to show in this video is how you can write your own indicators, your all time highs, how you can write the strategy and also how you can backtest the results. Before we begin, I would like to mention that the code that I'm going to show you is downloadable on my website. So if you go to traderpy.com by following the links in the description, you can download this Jupyter Notebook. So let us begin. So uh, what we have here, we are importing our libraries as, as usual, MetaTrader 5, Pandas, Plotly, and then IPython display for displaying data. Um, we're connecting to a MetaTrader 5 platform to receive the historical prices and uh, the symbol name for the German stock index is DE40 at my brokerage. So we are uh, now exporting weekly data and we're trying to export as much as possible. And here the weekly OHLC data on the German stock index is in this table here. And we can also plot them using Plotly Express. So th that's this line here. We can plot uh, the close prices here on this chart. The all-time high is defined uh, using the close prices and by using expanding.max we get the we get the all-time high at that moment and the drawdown is defined by taking 1 minus the close the current close price divided by the current all-time high. So this is a data frame with the all-time high and drawdown column. And if we look at the graph here, so we're using Plotly Express again, and we're plotting the close and all-time high. 
this is what it looks like. So here the red line represents the all time high at that moment and the tendency of all time high is it only increases over time, right? We can also plot the drawdown. So this is what the drawdown looks like. So if we are at the all time high, the drawdown is zero. And if the drawdown increases, that means that prices are actually dropping. So this value, for example, on February 16th, we had a drawdown of 27%, which is this point here. And then uh, in March 2020, we had a drawdown of 37%, which is the low after hitting COVID. So this is this point here. And now that we know the drawdown levels, uh, we can try to write a strategy based on uh, these lines here. So this is a strategy. We're buying uh, when drawdown reaches 5% or when it reaches 15% or when it reaches 35%. You can also, for example, add 50, 60, 70, 80%. That is up to you. But for this video, let's just work with these three numbers. And the exit strategy or the selling strategy is to sell when we reach the previous all-time high. So again, let's look at the chart down here. So we bought here at minus 5%, here at minus 15%, and sold at the previous all-time high. Okay. All right. So what we have here is uh, now a signal function that will uh, tell us whether to buy whenever we hit a drawdown. And this function is calculated very easily. So if the drawdown is greater or equal 35%, then the signal is 35% drawdown buy. If the drawdown is greater or equal 15 uh percent drawdown then we are returning a 15 percent signal else if it's five percent we're returning a five percent signal otherwise the drawdown is less than five percent so we don't have to act on this so to define the signal column in our data frame we use df.apply we pass in the get signal function and the axis is equal to one is specifying that i want to apply the function on each row so here, if you look down here, I scattered the signals that we have based uh, on this function here. And we see that these are the drawdown values that are below 5%. These are drawdown values that are between 5 and 15%. These are the drawdown values that are between 15 and 35%. And here we have one drawdown value that is greater than 35%. And if you look at the distribution of drawdowns, we see that 51% of the time, the drawdown is less than 5%. 32% of the time, the drawdown is greater than 5%. 16% of the time, the drawdown is greater than 15%. And then here we have a small point here. So one, there's one occasion where drawdown was greater than 35%. So we see that usually the drawdowns are tend to be very small and the bigger they are, the less uh, we have. To run the backtest, I've imported two classes, class position, which is containing data about our trades. So we have things like open date time, open price, or type volume. You can even specify stop loss and take profit. And here we uh, initially assign close date time, close price, and profit to none. And when we open the trade, the initial status is open and you can also add comments. So if you want to uh, separate trades into certain groups, you can add a comment to do that. It has a method to close positions. So you can call this method to close your position and then it will calculate your profit and then change the status of your position to close. If you want to retrieve data of the position, I've created a method as dict, which is returning all the data in dictionary format. Uh, the class strategy, uh, this is where we are performing the backtest. So in this class, we have something like starting balance, the volume traded, list of positions, which is initially set to an empty list. And then we have data, which is our data frame containing OHLC data and our indicators and our signals that we've calculated. Uh, then uh, we also set this property trading allowed. So this property is important to check if uh, there are positions already existing. If they are, we will set this to false. If there are no positions uh, existing yet, uh, we will set trading allowed to true so we can trade. 
and the result uh, the resulting positions after running the backtest is then uh, specified in this method where we have get positions and we return a data frame with the PNL calculated. This method here will add a position. So we have a list self positions, and if we add a position, uh, we are basically appending uh, or adding uh, the position class inside this list. Then this trade function uh, will check for signals if we should open a trade or not. So if trading allowed is tr uh, we are setting trading allowed to true initially, and if the signal. Uh, so if the data dot signal is equal to drawdown, so drawdown is the input parameter. So we specified in this case 5%, 15%, 35%. 5 so if the signal is equal to the percentage we've defined, it, it means that we want to open position. In this loop here, we're checking if there is no position already containing a comment of that specific drawdown. And if we find something, then we set self trading allowed to false, so it will disable trading for this period. If there are no open positions, uh, so then we ha can actually add a position. So self add position, where we're adding this position class, so we're buying uh, for the current time, current clo uh, current uh, current close with the current volume. Stop loss and taper set to zero, and here the drawdown is the comment, right? So we're commenting if it's 5, 15, or 35 percent. So inside uh, run, we uh, we are iterating through our OHLC data, and we are checking for 5 percent drawdowns, 15 percent drawdowns, and 35 percent drawdowns, and passing the data as well, which is then processed in this method here. So uh, then we also have to add the exit strategy, which is very simple. So if the drawdown is zero, so if you basically if we are reaching all time highs, then the drawdown is zero. Then every open position that we have should then close for current time and current price. And after that, after the run is over, we then return the list of uh, our positions, which is uh, get positions df here. So now that we have defined the classes, uh, we can then create an instance of the strategy class in by DD strategy. So I'm setting the initial capital to 10,000 and trading one contract. And here, this data frame contains our OHLC data and indicators and signals that we've calculated. And the result of the backtest is then saved here after running the strategy. Then we are displaying the result and then plotting the PNL uh, onto our onto a chart. And this is the resulting data frame. So over the course of eight years, so uh, between 2000, 2013 and 2021, we've only opened 13 trades, uh, 14 trades, which is actually insane considering the amount of time. So again, uh, time is the biggest resource in this strategy and you're looking for these high quality trades and the long period to allow prices to come back up eventually. And now we're down here. So in this uh, in this cell here, we are plotting the trades onto our uh, onto our chart, and this is how it looks. So again, if you want to study the code, you can download it on my website. So just follow the links in the descriptions. If you have any questions about the code or have some uh, suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. I thank you everyone for watching the video, and I'll be back very soon. Thank you.